Hi chess fans, today I'll continue the series of videos on Rudolf Spielmann's classic book The Art of Sacrifice in Chess, which gives insight into the nature of sacrifice and chess magic. In the book Spielmann teaches to transform matter into energy, that is, to get dynamic advantages for sacrificed material. In my initial video I talked about the obstructive sacrifice and today I'll show you the game from the chapter on preventive or anti-castling sacrifice. Castling is a very important move as it secures the king and establishes communication between the rooks, which in its turn provides for the central development of all forces. Preventive sacrifice prevents the opponent from castling and aims at an early attack on the king. This kind of sacrifices are always active and require energetic play, as Spielmann puts it, in order to achieve its highest aim, coercive pressure must be exerted on the opponent. And this game is a great example of such energetic play and exertion of pressure. Spielmann played black pieces and he chose Grunfeld defense for this game. So d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, d5, e3, bishop g7, castles, bishop d2, c6, queen b3, b6, c takes, c takes, rook c1. Of course, it would be more natural to develop the light squared bishop and castle first, but rook c1 is also a perfectly sound move. Bishop b7, knight e5. Moving the same piece for the second time in the opening, which isn't really recommended. However, as black uh, isn't well developed yet and can't uh, punish white for this violation of opening rules, uh, it's perfectly sound move. And Spielmann played uh, knight fd7, attacking the knight on e5 and threatening to win a pawn. And uh, the correct move here for white would have been f4, defending the knight, and if black takes on e5, white would have taken back with f uh, pawn. However, knight, uh, white here makes a serious mistake by taking on d7. This move is a mistake because it is a loss of two tempi, as the knight uh, on e5 already made two moves, and by taking on d7 and it made the third move and now uh, white is losing tempi however if black made the most natural move namely queen takes d7 in order to defend the d5 pawn which is um, attacked twice by the way uh, white would have um, gained back one of these lost tempi by playing Bishop b5 attacking the queen and castle next move. That's why Spielmann took on d7 with a knight, developing it, so no loss of tempi for black, and sacrificing the pawn. However, it would be really dangerous for white to accept this sacrifice, because knight takes d5 would be followed by e6, knight c3, and now you can see why it's, it was dangerous. Because um, after the disappearance of d5 pawn, the b7 bishop uh, is turned into the monster attacking g2. And now white has serious problems in finishing the development as the light square bishop cannot move because g2 would fall. As the bishop can't move, white can't castle and the, center, and the king would get stuck in the center. And black, of course, would have played e5 opening up the center, and uh, which is always a good idea when the opponent's king is stuck in the center and gets serious uh, compensation for the sacrificed pawn. Uh, that's why uh, after knight takes d7, white declined the sacrifice. And as black is still uh, threatening to play e5, uh, which is a typical move of, in Grunfeld, uh, white played f4. Uh, in order to prevent black from playing e5 once and for all. And then in next moves, uh, white was planning to develop the bishop and castle, finishing the uh, development. 
Of course, black in this position could uh, make some natural moves like e6, uh, knight f6, uh, while white would finish the development and the position would be equal. But uh, as by playing f4, white uh, lost the third tempi while the king is still in the center, uh, Spielmann writes in the book, the fact that white could give away three tempi without suffering thereby would be a little humiliating for black. So Spielmann decided to punish his opponent for neglecting the development with a very energetic and creative play. Can you find Spielmann's original idea and his next three moves? Out of the blue comes e5. F takes e and now another blow. This time the sacrifice of knight. Knight takes e5. D takes e. Spielmann writes about all this. A violent breakthrough by a pawn against a seemingly bomb-proof point e5 and the sacrifice of a piece. Thus, the object of holding the king in the center and attacking it with all available forces is attained. So what now? What is the third move? Bishop takes e5? No. Pawns don't count in romantic chess. As Spielmann puts it, the opening up of lines must be carried out ruthlessly. So, d4. Opening up the central file and the bishop's diagonal. So, while the position before the violent breakthrough on e5 was equal, this position is objectively in white's favor as the sacrifices weren't objectively correct, and engine shows plus two for white. However, it will be almost impossible for white to find precise defensive moves, as the remaining black pieces are extremely active, and white will be under constant attack. Spielmann was aware uh, of the fact that his sacrifices weren't correct, and he wrote in the book, the sacrifice of the knight cannot be vindicated by analysis, and it would possibly be refuted in a correspondence game. But in a contest over the board and with a time limit, it would nearly always win through. So, faced with the unexpected sacrifices, White immediately makes a mistake, which is by no means exceptional and is explained by the effect, the psychological effect, imparted by the sacrifices, as we discussed in the previous video. So, White played knight d1, which is a serious mistake. Probably white was scared of uh, queen h4 check and played knight d1 in order to respond to this check with knight f2. Uh, however, in this position, uh, it would be uh, much better to play natural e takes d as queen h4 check uh, wasn't as uh, scary as it looked to white. Because black, uh, white could have just escaped uh, with the king through d1 c2 to uh, b1. That's why Spielmann uh, wasn't planning to check. Instead, he was planning to take with a queen on uh, d4, opening the d file, after which e5 pawn would fall, and the rooks would join the attack, and uh, black would have a serious attack for the sacrificed material. However, uh, white played knight d1, uh, which is very bad. Uh, Spielmann plays bishop takes e5 and uh, white responded e4 uh, in order to keep at least one of the center files closed however it leads to the loss of the second pawn for the sacrificed piece bishop takes e4 so now black has a very strong attack and two pawns uh, for a piece which is more than enough Knight uh, f2 attacking the bishop, bishop d5 attacking the queen, queen h3. The idea is to defend uh, the g2 pawn with a queen so that the bishop uh, finally develops and uh, the king finally castles. However, and that would be exactly the case if black 
uh, took the third pawn uh, greedily for uh, the sacrificed piece. However, Spielmann, of course, was a romantic player. He wasn't a pawn grabber, so he continued the attack. Queen e7 with an x-ray. Bishop e2, um, closing the uh, file of the queen. Uh, but, of course, comes, as you might have probably guessed, d3. The idea is uh, the idea on surface is to open the d file. However, the more important idea is to vacate the d4 square for the bishop. Um, if so, after knight takes d3, which was the case in the game, and rook e8. Now white cannot castle because if white castles, bishop d4 check as the d4 square is now free, and uh, taking on e2 next move and uh, winning. So after uh, rook e8, mm, it was much better uh, to play queen e3. Uh, this way, white would be able to continue the resistance. Uh, for example, bishop takes g2, knight takes e5, bishop takes h1, and knight g4 defending the queen. However, it's very difficult to find precise defensive moves uh, when you are under constant attack and pressure, and that's why it's uh, understandable that white made a last fatal mistake, king f1, moving away from this uh, terrible battery. However, this move is losing on the spot. Bishop takes b2, of course not uh, to win a pawn, uh, but uh, to open the file, attacking the bishop, creating immediate threats, and also attacking the rook. So rook e1 defending, queen f6 check, knight f2, bishop d4 threatening checkmate, queen g3 um, defending from checkmate, rook e4. So the only black piece that isn't taking part in the attack will join it now. Uh, h4, as white doesn't know what to do, just look at white pieces. They are forced into the corner and aren't really doing anything, while black pieces um, are fantastically active, uh, and now the last piece joins the attack, and uh, that means uh, white is hopeless. So bishop b5, rook takes e1, bishop takes, rook e3 attacking the queen, queen g5, rook takes, uh, king takes, and now that knight is uh, without a defense, queen takes f2, king d1, bishop takes g2, rook e1, bishop f3 check, bishop e2, bishop c3 attacking e1, bishop takes f3, queen takes f3 check. Now if rook e2, queen d3 check and white is losing the rook, and if, as it was the case in the game, king c2, then just bishop takes e1 and black is a bishop and uh, three pawns up. That's why in this position white resigned. So I hope you enjoyed the game and uh, if you did, uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel uh, and see you next time.